Welcome back everybody. Um, this is episode two of the R80 build. We are currently designing and then building the battery box. Um, so here I've got a 3D scan which I took using a Reverpoint, um, I think it's Reverpoint, Rev, oh, Point Pop scanner. Um, it's the first time I've ever done any 3D scanning. Um, it was a little bit fiddly. Um, it took me about half an hour to get this scan and as you can see there's still kind of big holes in it and missing data. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, well, just fill these holes pretty quickly on, on some editing software, but I'm also going to use photogrammetry here. Um, photogrammetry is a process of taking hundreds and hundreds of pictures. I think I used 806 pictures from different angles of the motor um, and then using software to pull them all together to create a 3D uh, model of this. So that will just be coming up here. Um, and then what we're going to do is we are going to cut this down, um, but not cut it down, cut bits off of it. So we're going to get rid of things like the exhaust ports, um, the this clutch lever here at the back, these wires, um, and clean up the shape a little bit. We This has got to encase the batteries. So we need as much internal space as possible and here's, here's the finished product so uh, it looks very similar obviously I've had to change a uh, few of the shapes um, slightly but it's still very much dimensionally the same now I've decided to use Mitsubishi Outlander um, cells for this build uh, 48 uh, 40 amp hour um, cells are configured to 72 volts and 80 amp hours um, I managed to pick up a whole pack for fairly cheap, so should do me for the next couple of builds. Um, I'm just going to pull in a cube here of the right dimension and see. We should be pretty close. We are pretty far off. Okay, so luckily we do have a bit of wiggle room here. Um, it may look pretty terrible here at the moment, but I don't think it's actually too bad. I think we've got about a centimetre either side that we need to bring it out by. Uh, a couple of centimeters up here on the top hand corner turn this blue so it's the same as the batteries um but yeah so we do actually have six centimeters of um tolerance uh, if we widen this by six centimeters it will still fit within the frame and i think i've got four centimeters front to back as well so it will fit i'm gonna wear, go away do that now and we will start with the 3d printing While we wait for that to 3D print, um, I just started putting together the actual battery pack. Um, this, this is a Mitsubishi Outlander uh, module. Um, each one houses 10 cells and I think there was 10 of these packs in, in the whole, um, the overall pack. So I've split, split these up as you can see here um, into individual cells and configured them into what will be a 72 volt 80 amp hour configuration um, I'm sorry if there's really shitty camera angles going on right now I've just broken my um, off camera monitor so I am guessing completely right now um, and as if you've been watching these videos for I'm no no video editor so it'll be what it'll be um, but yeah so these are I think they're LEV 40 cells um, obviously configuring them two, two in parallel to get 80 amp hours for this build. Um, this is essentially what the configuration will be. Just readjust you here. I'm just waiting for some copper bus bars. Well, I'm waiting for some copper to make some bus bars. And essentially it will just be configured as so, um, with bus bar going up there, and the same with this one up on here. I'll put some uh, kind of protective sheeting between the two, and then because there wasn't enough space in in the actual engine to uh, enclose all of this, and I've had to make some modifications to the 3D design. But these will actually sit in the cylinders. Um, these two small modules, and um, so we'll sit in the cylinders. 
or wire them all up properly. Um, so yeah, just weighing on the extra copper and I will then get that all together and hopefully in the next video I'll be able to show you a fully assembled functional pack that looks like an R80 slash 7 engine. In other exciting news, uh, the hub motor has turned up. Um, so this is the QS273 um, from QS Motors, um, shipped all the way from sunny China. Um, it's, it's quite a heavy motor actually, um, got a fair bit of weight to it, um, but it, it looks fairly well built, fairly well made, um, and it should fit out in pretty perfectly. Um, it, it's going to be a bit of a challenge to fabricate the um, swing arm to get, to get it to all fit and match up nicely. Um, but I think we already knew that um, when I went into this build. Yeah, quite a quite a hefty, hefty old hub motor, um, but it should do nicely for this build. So once the battery box is complete, um, I will then start working on modifying the swing arm to accept this, um, welding the kind of key stops and things like that in there. Um, I think that's probably going to take up my Christmas, so that'll be a bit of a Christmas project. Um, so yeah, stay tuned, um, subscribe, realistically we'll have the next video up with the completed battery box and how to fab um, the swing arm to take these hub motors. Um, if you haven't watched the previous video, I will be keeping the old uh, direct drive. Um, I'll be keeping this and fabricating this, so this will actually uh, mate up to the wheel on, on the other side there. It will actually mate up here, so it stays um, looking very, very original, um, which will then in turn mate up to the bike. Um, so yeah, it should be, should be quite an interesting fab project. So if you haven't already, subscribe, uh, stay tuned. Um, and yeah, we'll keep those updates coming. Thanks guys.